All right, gang, now that Style Theory is officially launched, we can do our first ever four-way channel crossover weekend. Uh, we haven't done one of these in a while, so uh, pitch me thoughts. Oh, Matthew, quit hijacking my calls. Uh, this is important creative decision-making, Jason. Thank you very much. Uh, Mario movie. That's a thing that's doing really well. How about how about that? We did that already last mm. week. Uh, new Pepsi logo. We did that one, too. Seriously, do you even read your emails? We could always do FNAF. No. No. Okay, hear me out. Cannibalism week. We already did that one too. We did it twice. Okay, but hear me out again. A third time. I mean, I don't hate it, but what do you do for style at that point? Ooh, uh, Leatherface. The skin. Yeah, it's too dark. Monetization gods will frown upon it. Fine. What, what about just... Meat? Meat? Like, meat week? Meat week! As a vegetarian, I object to all of this. Meat week! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, the only show that tackles the real issues like why is Doja Cat wearing a chair on her head? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first ever four-way theorist channel crossover, Mystery Meat Weekend. That's right, a whole week's worth of uploads all dedicated to the wonderful subject of meat. A slab of programming that shows that when I'm sleep-deprived and a little bit hungry, to come up with the absolute best ideas. We've got ourselves a variety of fine cuts available for you this week weekend for your culinary consumption. Whether you prefer a slice of grandma's mystery meat pie over on Game Theory, want to top off your spaghetti with a meatball made from mammoth over on Food Theory, or you're just running scared from a tall, dark, meaty monster over on Film Theory. But it's right here on Style Theory where I'm the most excited, where today I finally get the chance to look into the question that's been on my mind for the last decade. How many people can you feed with a dress made entirely of meat? You know Amy, our creative director for this channel? She's a 10-year strong vegetarian, and let me tell you, she was ecstatic when I told her about this programming decision. <laughs> All joking aside, though, she was totally on board with this because it gave us a chance to rewind to a simpler, more nostalgic time. 2010. A time when our minds were blown by Inception and Double Rainbows. A time when the world would gym tan and laundry like a G6. A time when Team Edward and Team Jacob would start Twitter wars in between rounds of Angry Birds. It was also the heyday of the MTV Video Music Awards. The VMAs. Basically, MTV's attempt at being the Grammys, except less of a well-respected award show and more of a place for this. I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Basically, it was the go-to spotlight for anyone who wanted to push boundaries to the extreme. Sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. And when it came to boundary pushing, no one did it better than the mother monster herself, Lady Gaga. Of course, she had her performances that ranged from cubist nun to let me literally bleed out for my craft on the stage. But even more pressworthy was her fashion at these things. Look at these runway looks. There was the year that she was genetically fused with a crow, the year that she was a fancy peacock, the year that she was dressed like your science fair project about the planets, and the year that she went to space in a fishbowl. But buried amongst those bird and nerd looks was one that stood out among the rest. One that would go down in history as the most audacious, over-the-top, out-of-the-box article of clothing ever conceived. I'm talking about the year that she merged with a cow. Huh, feeling really hungry all of a sudden. Anyone else up for barbecue? This thing made best dressed lists, worst dressed lists, news headlines, Lines, but more than anything else, it made people go, why? To which I say, why not? It's your LBD and your LDB all in one. That's a little black dress and late dinner buffet, in case you aren't hip on the latest style lingo. So today, as part of Mystery Meat Weekend, I have to know, 13 years later, could you actually eat this thing? And if so, how many mouths could you feed? Would this thing be a delicious dinner or a dining disaster? Tuck in those napkins, friendos, because it's time to eat. So before we get into the math of it all, let's go back to talk about the motive, the whole why meat question that I just alluded to. Because this wasn't just clickbait to generate headlines. This was meat with a message. Just not the one that I would have expected. You see, prior to making the fashion world have a cow by wearing a cow, Lady Gaga did a photo shoot for a Japanese magazine cover where she was asked to pose in a teeny bikini made out of beef. Not 
actually sure that I can safely show the original image of this thing on screen, so let's just have the editors slap on a few extra cold cuts here to keep everything monetization friendly. Make sure you bologna up that belly and salami up those sides there, guys. Sorry for stepping on your vision there, Gaga, but we've got mouths to feed. As the story goes, it was here that she got the idea for a whole outfit made out of meat, bag, hat, and shoes, and she would wear it as a sign of protest. Now, if you're like me, you might be thinking that she was protesting something against the meat industry, right? Or maybe making a stand against world hunger, or models being treated as meat. But nope, not even close. In fact, it had nothing to do with food at all. Gaga's meaty message here was targeting the US Army and their don't ask, don't tell policy, which banned gay or lesbian servicemen from expressing their sexual orientation, a cause that she would then double down on in a speech that she would term the prime rib of America speech. Yep, you heard me right, the prime rib of America. But it's what does this even mean? Equality is the prime rib of what we stand for as a nation. Don't get me wrong here, I appreciate the idea behind this thing, but the metaphor is uh, pretty darn rough. Or, I suppose I should say, the meat of four. Boom! Nailed it! Now, before I send out my VMA after-party invites, I'm gonna need to know just how many calories I'm cooking up. And just like a good recipe, fashion needs ingredients. It needs materials. In this case, that material is gonna be beef, but what kind of beef are we talking about here? According to Gaga, it was made of prime rib and plain steak, but that might not actually be true. Designer Franck Fernandez went on record to say that the meat used was a cut named matambre, and if that doesn't sound familiar, that's probably because it's not, at least not here in the US. Matambre, which is literally translated to hunger killer, is a very thin cut of beef most commonly found in Argentina, Uruguay, and parts of Paraguay, which makes sense given that Fernandez himself is Argentinian. He even stated that he went to his personal butcher in LA to source the meat from this dress. That said, depending on how familiar the butcher was with matambre, most butchers here in America don't know how to cut it, and what you end up with is more akin to flank steak, which is what many articles at the time reported the dress to be. The main difference between the two is the specific cut of muscle used, where matambre uses what's called the fly swatting muscle from the ribs, while flank steak is the abdominal muscle. I love that this is just literally a food theory episode, by the way. I've learned more about steak in the last two hours of researching for this episode than I have in the last two years of uploading onto food theory. Note to self, more steak-related content on the actual food channel. Anyway, since most recipes call out the fact that flank steak can be used as a substitute for matambre, I think we're gonna be fine using flank steak as our base for all the calculations that we're about to make. So, now that we know the cut of meat, it's time to see how much meat we're talking about here. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which, uh, did anyone have talking about the Department of Agriculture on their style theory bingo card? Cause, let me tell ya, I didn't. The CDC? Sure. FDA? Definitely. But the USDA? These channels, man, they never cease to surprise me. Anyway, according to the USDA, raw flank steak contains 165 calories per 100 grams, or 0.2 pounds of beef. Fernandez stated in his interview that he bought, quote, more than 50 pounds of meat to make the dress. So to be fair, only 40 pounds, or 18,000 grams of it, ended up being actually used for the look. Now, it's unclear if this total has taken into account all the accessories, but for these of our calculations, we're just gonna assume so. Just know that an extra bite or two could be floating around on her head, or hanging out on her feet. So at 165 calories per 100 grams, this outfit weighs in at the whopping 30 thousand calories. 29,937.1 if we're being exact. Since the average adult eats around 2,000 calories a day, that means that with this one fit, you could feed just shy of 15 people for one day, or one person for 15 days. But what if we're just looking for an epic one-of-a-kind dinner party? If the VMAs wanted to serve an elite section of 2010 celebs some gaga tartare at their after party, how many people could they put on their guest list? Food & Wine magazine states that the proper serving amount for a tartare dinner, which is raw meat mixed with egg and capers, in case you were curious, is about 226.8 grams, or half a pound. That means that, drumroll please, we would be able to invite 80 of our favorite VMA guests to the Grand Gaga get-together. Now that right there, that is a party. We can have Beyonce, we can invite Tay-Tay, Rihanna, Kesha, we can even invite this guy. I always forget his name though. Jason Oh, yeah. And you know what? Even better than that, we can actually do it on the cheap. In the US, the average cost for flank steak is $9.74 per pound. Multiply that by the 40 pounds of beef that ended up walking the red carpet, and we can estimate that if I were to go out and purchase this dress at a butcher shop, it would run me the respectable $389.60. Not too shabby when you consider just how much people usually spend on their award show looks. In 2022, Rosé from the K-pop group Blackpink wore an Yves Saint Laurent dress costing an eyewater 
slaughtering $4,890. And it was just black. Shiny to be sure, but it was still a fairly simple black jersey dress, which you could make yourself for anywhere between 9 to 30 bucks a yard of fabric, depending on where you go to. Meaning that even if you broke it down to its base material costs, Gaga's meaty masterpiece is still more affordable. And heck, you can't even eat that other dress. You weren't wearing a T-bone as a tiara or anything. That is 12 meat dresses worth of materials right there, just gone to waste. Suddenly, Lady Gaga's meat dress is looking pretty darn tame. But theorists, well, it may look like my dreams have just come true, and we have just ushered in our new era of meat-based clothing. The truth is, I've been overlooking something huge. Something that turns this dress from a delicious delicacy to a potentially life-threatening disaster. Theorists, it's time we talk about temperature. Specifically, holding temperature. In general, holding temperature is used in food service to ensure food safety and quality. The holding temperature for hot foods is usually above 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 C to prevent bacterial growth. Well, the holding temperature for cold foods is usually below 41 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius to prevent spoilage. Anything that falls in the middle of those two lands in what's called the temperature danger zone. What makes this one so dangerous? Well, these are the temperatures that allow bacteria to thrive. And if food is left to sit there for too long at those temps, it can result in food poisoning. This is why when you go to a buffet, you see people constantly checking temperatures. They're helping to regulate the holding temperature to keep you and your tummy safe. But when you're on the red carpet of the VMAs, yeah, this is suddenly a big problem for Gaga because as she wears the dress, her body is actively raising that dress's temperature. And oh, this isn't me trying really hard to insert a she's too sexy for her dress joke. She is literally too hot for the dress. The human body regularly releases somewhere between 290 and 3800 kilojoules of thermal energy, aka heat, per hour. So while this meat is resting against Lady Gaga's body, or more accurately, the corset that gave this thing structure, the heat from her body is going to easily be able to push that meat into the danger zone, thanks to something known as specific heat. I really didn't expect to be pulling out the old physics textbooks for this one, but here we are. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, despite all the steak talk and the science talk, you still are on YouTube's second largest style and fashion channel. Yeah, did you guys know that? Based on average views for our videos, we are actually the second largest style and fashion channel on YouTube. That's crazy, right? I'm coming for you, Hope Scope. Specific heat is the measurement of how much heat's required to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree. According to engineeringtoolbox.com, the specific heat for flank steak is 2.34 kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius, which uh, is pretty darn confusing, so let's quickly break it down. This means that for every 2.34 kilojoules of heat, one kilogram or a thousand grams of flank steak is gonna increase in temperature by one degree Celsius. So if Lady Gaga is putting off even the minimum of 290 kilojoules per hour and her dress weighs in at 40 pounds or 18,000 grams, that means that the temperature of her dress will have raised by 44.24 degrees Fahrenheit or 6.8 degrees Celsius in a single hour, which would easily push Lady Gaga's dress in the temperature danger zone. This thing isn't just a bacteria free-for-all, it is an all-out biohazard. Moral of the story here, well yes, you could feed around 80 people off this one dress made of meat, no one should be eating a meat dress worn by a pop star during an event where she sat on dirty chairs, touched people, and in general just existed existed in it for over five hours. If you're into edible clothing, please look somewhere else. Maybe we'll cover it in a future episode, I don't know. Anyway, in the end, the dress didn't wind up going to waste. In order to preserve this moment for out-of-the-box fashion fans and little monsters alike, the dress was taxidermied and basically turned into beef jerky so it could last forever. Or at least for longer than raw meat usually does. Its first home after being jerkified was at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Then it traveled the country as part of the Women Who Rock exhibition. And now, if you ever happen to be in Las Vegas, you can pop on over to the Park MGM Resort to see it at the House of Gaga exhibit, just like our creative director Amy did while researching for this episode. I mean, look at this thing. It's like a giant Slim Jim in a glass case. I don't even want to think about what it probably smells like. Probably like that time I accidentally left a Big Mac in my car for a week. What if I still have that thing? I'd probably turn it into a pair of nice shoes for next year's Streamy Awards. But hey, that's just a theory. A food, uh, sorry, a style theory. Keep looking sharp. And don't forget, friendos, this is Mystery Meat Weekend. All weekend long, we're uploading delicious meat-themed episodes across all the channels. Food theory, game theory, and film theory. You should go check them all out, and once you're done, comment that you've officially become a king or queen of the meats. Make all of Amy's meat-related trauma from doing all this research worth it. I recommend another first lady of fashion, Grandma Ursula's fit over on Game Theory. As always, my friends, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next week.